Yo, what is good people, it's Vozobit here and welcome to the ultimate beat mixing tutorial. What do I mean by calling this tutorial ultimate? In this video, I will try to teach you how to mix your beats quickly and efficiently so they are ready to be sold, they are ready to uh, be put on YouTube. I will go through all the important steps you have to know uh, to mix your beats. So after watching this video, you will have a great resource uh, to start mixing your beats. I'm editing this video right now and I thought I didn't sound really convincing so this video has around 30 minutes and right now you can invest those 30 minutes of your life to actually improve your beat making skills. In those 30 minutes you will learn pretty much everything you need to know to start mixing your beats. There is no quicker way, no tricks, no robots mixing for you. Okay actually this kind of exists but Never mind, this tutorial is for you if you want to start mixing. Enjoy the rest of the video and make sure you watch the whole thing to understand everything completely. Okay, so what do we have here? This is uh, the beat I've made on my yesterday's live stream. It's a kind of atmospheric sounding trap beat. That's how it sounds like with the basic mix I was doing on my way when making the beat. Uh, so right now I'm going to go to the mixer and I'm going to turn all the faders in this project to zero, to absolute zero. So they are at the default position. Same with the pen knobs, everything is at zero. And right now it will sound horrible. Nothing is mixed, everything is clipping like almost 10 dB on the master bus, uh, so we need to do something about it. The first thing you can do uh, is to select all of the instruments in your project and bring them down like 15 or even 20 dB. But if you don't want to do it, uh, just make a pseudo master bus, which is basically a group track for all the tracks in your project. Uh, this is called pseudo master because it actually goes to the, to the real master track right here in the mixer. The pseudo master track is that I can lower the volume of the whole beat of all of the tracks in the project with one fader before it hits the real master bus. The difference between this fader on the pseudo master bus and this fader on the real master bus is that this fader um, is adjusting the volume before all of these effects that we'll be uh, putting here. And this fader right here is adjusting the volume after those effects. So right now I will play the beat and I will be lowering the volume. As I said, 20 dB. And right now it still sounds horrible because it's not mixed, everything is at zero, but it doesn't clip. So the first thing you need to keep in your mind is do not clip on the master bus when you are mixing anything basically, not only beats, anything you want to mix cannot clip during mixing. And for those of you who do not understand uh, clipping, it's basically like a ceiling. Like I am in a room right now and the signal is jumping. Let's say I'm jumping right now and I'm just hitting the ceiling with my head. And my head isn't coming through the ceiling to my neighbor's flat up here. It's staying in my room, it hurts a lot and nothing good comes out of it. Okay, so we are not clipping. We've adjusted the volume with the pseudo master bus and we are good to go. We can start mixing. Here is the beat, here are all the tracks. Right now I'm going to select all of the instruments that are in this project, including the drums, so hot, snare, every cymbal, and all of those instruments right here. That's everything. And right now I'm making them volume infinite, so they are completely silent. And here comes my first advice about mixing beats. A beat is a rhythm. So we are building our beat on a rhythm. In my philosophy of mixing, if you have a beat that strongly relies on its rhythm, which is like 99% of the beats, start mixing from the drums. Drums are the core, the skeleton of the whole beat. And then you have the body, you have all of the ears and eyes and all of this stuff. If you've mixed your drums properly, if you've gave them a nice punch, if everything is um, at the correct level, then adding all of the other instruments from your project 
is just a pleasure. Right now I have to um, turn off my studio monitors because the microphone will be capturing them uh, when I'm mixing. So uh, this time I will be mixing on my headphones. I do not recommend mixing um, on headphones exclusively. They can be a big help in mixing, but if you have any kind of studio monitors, try to use them. If you have an untreated room where the bass is just so messy, you can't really hear what's going on in the low end, then you can use headphones because uh, they take out the room out of the equation. Personally, as this room is not fully treated, um, as far as the bass is concerned, I'm mixing everything on my studio monitors, but when it comes to bass, I'm always checking everything out on the headphones. And some of the people will recommend you opened headphones for mixing, uh, which are a completely different construction. Those headphones um, have those holes in here. They feel much different when mixing. It's more like a speaker, not a headphone. I know it kind of doesn't make sense, but the characteristics, the feeling of the sound with those headphones is more similar to the speaker. And the second thing is that they do not make your ears tired as quickly as closed headphones do. And if your ears are tired, uh, needless to say, uh, your mixes aren't going to sound good. But if you are not going to mix for like three hours straight, you can use closed headphones and you are good to go. Okay, so let's open up the mixer. We'll be using uh, the mixer view for mixing, which is pretty obvious. And the area you should be focused on the most is here the master meter. So let's start from the kick. I'm slowly rising the volume of the kick. I'm starting to hear it. And as it's at somewhere between minus 12, minus 18 dB, that's okay. You will need to rise the volume of your headphones if you, if you can't hear it properly at this level. But right now, as it's somewhere here, uh, between minus 12, minus 18 dB, let's say, you have a plenty of headroom to put more things uh, into your mix. Next, the snare. Same thing. Okay, we can hear the snare. And now try to adjust the volume of the snare to the volume of the kick, because those are the two most punchy things in your drum mix. Okay, somewhere around here. These decisions aren't final. We may change them a little bit in the future, but for now we are just making a general mix of the drums. Next to the clap. The clap is usually a little bit quieter than the snare. It's an additional thing. In this case, it's more like a snare rim. And the last thing is the top end and in the top end we've got hi-hats and other cymbals. Okay, somewhere around here. And right now the cymbals. Those are the additional hi-hats. The cymbal. Okay, and the opening crash right here. As you can hear, it's got a little bit too much uh, reverb, so I'm lowering the amount of reverb I have here and a little bit less delay. Okay, that's fine. Those things right here are the sends, so this means that this track is being sent to the delay bus and the reverb bus. Bright plate reverb, this thing right here. So all of the drums are at the correct level, let's say, right now. But we need to take care of the samples themselves, those, those are just raw samples. No EQ, no compression, anything like that. The only thing I have EQ'd is this loop right here so it doesn't have any low end, and I've made it wider with the uh, Ozone um, Imager. So let's start from the kick. Now I'm going to use EQ on all of those drum tracks. As this kick is pretty low, we don't really need any of this higher end, so we can cut it like at around 15K 
or even 13k. So it's not so it's not as distorted. The next thing is the clap. We are inserting re-EQ. This clap doesn't need to have anything below 200 Hz, so that's okay. We don't need any information from the low end uh, on the clap because the clap doesn't really have the low end. And uh, if you do not uh, clean the samples, like the snares and hi-hats from their low end, um, the mud, the, 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 uh, everything that was in this low end will build up in the final mix. So you want to make sure everything is nice and clean. Now the snare, uh, pretty much same situation, but I'm going to high pass it at around 100 Hz. It's got some of this uh, low end uh, above 100 Hz, so I don't want to lose it. So the snare isn't uh, so dry. Now the hi-hats, uh, the hi-hats are pretty much simple. You will see why. Most of the information uh, in the hi-hat is here. So if you cut this thing, you can't really tell the difference. You can even go higher, but the hi-hat will become more like uh, empty. So I'm usually cutting it at around 1K. But I often use a kind of uh, a lower tuned hi-hat in my beats, so it may be different uh, for different kinds of hi-hats. And now the cymbals here, I don't really need to listen to anything, just cut everything below like 200, 300 Hertz, so there is nothing in the low end. Right now we can add a little bit of reverb uh, to the snare, so for this purpose I'm just drag and dropping the routing into the drum reverb I have here. And as you can, see, as you can uh, easily hear, we've got lots of reverb on the snare, so I'm lowering the amount uh, of reverb until I stop hearing the reverb. And when I stop hearing the reverb, I'm just making uh, the amount of the reverb a little bit higher. Okay. Same for the hi-hats because they are really, really dry. And it always adds a lot of life to the drums because most of the times samples are really, really dry. They can be compressed and stuff, but they don't have any effects like reverb, any space whatsoever. So when you are adding even small amounts of reverb to things like snares, claps, hi-hats, uh, you are just making them more lively, full of life. And the thing I'm always saying in that kind of situations, we as humans are used to being in a certain space. For example, this room is a space. If you are on a concert hall, you can hear the concert hall. Even your voice sounds different in that kind of um, buildings. So if you are hearing something that is 100% raw, it sounds unnatural. Of course, there are beats that do not really have any reverb, but they sound boring in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Uh, but um, most of the beats, most of the songs I'm listening to usually have um, some more creative mixing uh, in the drum section. And the last thing I will do here is uh, I'm going to pan this symbol that is here a little bit to the right, like 20%. And I will make it a little bit quieter. I maybe I will try to put this loop to the left so it's like on the other side of this this one. Okay, perfect. And I'm making them a little bit louder. So there's always a balance. If you are putting something to the right on, a, on the panning knob, then you have to put something to the left because uh, the right headphone will have more things than the left headphone. This is the balance in the stereo field. Okay, let's move forward. Let's get rid of those tracks. They are empty. And we have three layers. Let's uh, make them louder. The first one is just like a plug. The second one is a pad. And the third one is a violin. I will get rid of this effect right here so it doesn't sound as spacey. Okay, let's bring them down and uh, let's start uh, adding things. I'm going to start with the main thing, which is this plug. It's the most rhythmic. Uh, like the most important part here. I'm 
I usually try not to set the volume of things like this, like plugs in this case, um, at the same level as the drums. So they are just a little bit quieter than the drums. Next, let's add some background with the pads. Okay, they sit here really nicely. And then the violin, which is like the highest pitch in this um, in this beat. But I don't want this to be like the lead, like this. I want this to be in the background. So it's somewhere, you can hear it, but it doesn't play a huge role. And a really important tip when mixing instruments with the drums, you have to decide which instrument is the most important instrument or which two or three instruments are the most important instruments if you have like lots of instruments but in this case we've got only three instruments and i've already told you plug is the most important one for me it's like the core of of um, the melody here then we have the pad which is the background and the violin which could be the lead because it's the highest pitch in all of those three instruments but i want this um, to act like the background and the reason i'm uh, setting the level of the violin here uh, like this is because it's a beat there is going to be a vocalist a rapper or an, a, a kind of artist on this uh, this thing so there needs to be the space for the vocal if i set this violin really loud uh, there, will, there will be no space for the vocal whatsoever. So, uh, right now I want this uh, violin to be a little bit more put uh, into the background. Uh, so I'm going to use a plate reverb. So right now it sounds really spacious. And if you want to set the amount of the reverb, you can't do it on solo. If you are mixing, you are doing things in context. So you need to set the levels uh, of the reverb and of the instruments when you hear almost everything. And let's use uh, another kind of reverb, which will be bright plate reverb. Okay, and right now we've got this really bright, huge sounding reverb. And now it's time for the bass. Here it's called 808, but it's more like a, a risk bass, some kind of, I don't know. And it sounds like that. So it's really like flowing and sounding really bassy and huge. So I'm going to play the beat. And I'm going to be rising the volume of the bass. So the whole beat sounds full, sounds warm. And the bass shouldn't really be louder than the kick. Okay, somewhere around this area. And right now, in most cases, I am side-chaining the bass with the kick. For this purpose, I'm using Isotope Neutron, but you can do it uh, with any compressor you have. So let's pin this here so it doesn't disappear. And I'm taking the routing from the kick and putting it directly into the plugin. And right now, in this small window, I need to turn off uh, the MIDI send, so there is no MIDI being transferred through kick to the bass. And as you can see, the audio from the channel 1 and 2 from the kick is coming to the channel 3 and 4 uh, on, the, on the bass. So right now it can act like a trigger for the compressor. And most simply, you could use a compressor and just take out uh, the, the bass uh, when the kick hits. Uh, it would be the simplest way. But in that kind of beats uh, where it's not like an aggressive 808 or anything like that, uh, I will just cut out the low end here, so at around 100 Hz, and I'm going to use the dynamic mode with the sidechain, external, full signal, and right now all the signal that is coming to this plugin, so uh, on the uh, tracks 3 and 4, is going to act like a trigger for the sidechain, and you will see why. As you can see, right now as the kick hits, it's just taking out the low end from the bass for a really really short moment let's solo the kick and the bass as you can hear they are not arguing with themselves if i turn off neutron there is less space in the low end it doesn't sound bad but right now 
it sounds clean it sounds cleaner the kick is a little bit more punchy because it actually has more space to uh, sound like this okay the beat sounds pretty good i feel like the snare is a little bit too loud and maybe the hi-hat could be a little bit quieter too Okay, I'm not really using lots of compression in my beats because probably we're thinking where is uh, a compressor uh, and you need to know that you don't need to use compressor like all of the times. The purpose of a compressor is to squeeze the sounds together so if there is a huge difference in volume uh, in a particular instrument you can just squeeze it down so if there are like quiet drums and loud drums and quiet drums everything becomes uh, more close to the same level. But in this case, uh, most of the samples I'm using, most of the samples you are likely using, are pretty much uh, compressed. Let's have a look uh, at this rim. As you can see, it's super compressed. It's just flat right here. Let's have a look uh, at the snare. It's really compressed too here at this attack. The kick is super compressed and super squished too. So if we've put more compression to an already compressed uh, drum uh, bus made with uh, compressed samples, it will sound just over compressed. But if you have some live drums you've recorded yourself in your room, or if you have some samples you've made yourself, uh, you can definitely uh, compress them. But I would suggest doing it before you start leveling. If you are happy with the results now, you can finish the mix, you can start mastering. But if you want to add some more colors and some more spice to uh, the sound of the beat you can for example take your main sound this plug in this in this example and use some saturation um, in this case i will use isotope neutrons exciter i will set free bands right here and uh, i've pressed learn so they are sending up automatically and i will saturate this middle area in here with the warm saturation so as you can see, at its maximum it sounds a little bit distorted, but I don't want that much of a distortion. And I can use some tape saturation on the higher end. But also, not a lot, just a little bit. Great! And same with the pad, it's really like calm and really clean but I will use the exciter and I'll do almost the same thing. So now it's even buzzing. It's not as clean and I'll try to use it um, on the higher end too. It doesn't really work. Oh, so right now you can even hear some sizzling in the, in the background, in the higher end uh, here. Okay, let's leave it as it is. Let's have a listen in the context. They are pretty much present. Let's turn off Neutron. Let's turn on. The difference in this case is really, really minor, but those are those tiny things that make a difference uh, in the final product. Uh, you can do them, you can saturate, you can uh, do some minor tweaks here and there, but it's not necessary. What we could also do here is uh, we can take the equalizer and cut out everything um, below 100 Hz and use it for all of the instruments so we can be sure there is no information from those instruments. This space is exclusive for the bass line. And the last final thing um, I will change here is I will make the kick a little bit louder. I know it's pretty loud right now, you can hear it uh, nice and well, but I like those trap beats to be really punchy, really hard hitting, so just like 1 dB. Okay, and that's enough. Even just a little bit quieter. Okay. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to add. Here I have some kind of a, sh of a shimmer reverb, which is uh, a huge sounding reverb right here. And it's pitched uh, an octave higher, 12 semitones higher. So it sounds really, really bright and it's really high, high pitched. And I'm sending the plugs to this reverb right here. So it adds this glassy kind of sound in the background. 
and of course I'm lowering the amount of the reverb. Okay, and that's fine. Now let's have a listen of what we've made compared to what we had at the beginning. As you could hear, the difference is huge and it didn't really take us lots of the time. I'm recording for 43 minutes right now and I was explaining everything to you. Uh, so I think you could do everything under 30 minutes. Of course, this is not like the most complicated beat, but it has a few layers uh, which have different roles. So there was some things to uh, be mixed here. Of course, there are much simpler beats uh, on the market like um, drums, 808 and piano, and that's everything. So they are, of course, easier to mix, but even the simplest beats can sound not really good without a decent mix. I hope this video will help uh, make your mixes better. If you want to catch up with me uh, on a 101 online lesson where I would answer all of your questions and hopefully solve all of your concerns, uh, you can check the offer on my website. Let me know if you've learned anything new in the comment section down below. My name is Dominic, you've been watching Vodzo Beats and keep the good vibes alive!